Dear students, this is Dr. E. Muthumina Loshini, Assistant Professor of English, Mother Teresa Women's University, Kodekanal. I am glad to meet you with one more lesson, video lesson on American literature, and especially on uh, the drama by Lorraine Hansberry. Lorraine Hansberry, A Raisin in the Sun. So the drama entitled A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry, who is one of the best women writers of Afro-American literature and especially American literature. So the play Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. First, we must understand the title to understand the whole play. So the play is in three acts. Raisin in the Sun is a drama of three acts by Lorraine Hansberry and it was pub first published in 1959. The play's title has been taken from the poem Harlem, the poem called Harlem by, written by Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes and uh, in that poem, Langston Hughes examines that what happened to the dream, American dream, why, how it is deferred. So he wrote the poem, uh, The Dream Deferred, entitled Dream Defer Deferred. In that poem, he explained that what happened to uh, all the Americans, Afro-Americans dream. So he... Uh, he gave some examples and he speaks uh, through metaphors that how they became when they lost their dreams, when they cannot attain their dreams. So he gave one such example that their dreams are just like raisin in the sun. So they are depressed, they are dried, they lost the hope of attaining their dream. So that is the title Lorraine Hansberry has taken from the poem Harlem written by Langston Hughes. Okay, I hope that you understand the significance of uh, the title A Raisin in the Sun. It uh, totally expresses that what was the condition of uh, Afro-Americans living in America, the immigrants living in America. So just to express the real condition or the situation of the American, uh, Hansberry has given this title, A Raisin in the Sun. Okay, so who is Lorraine Hansberry? So he is a playwright, he is an activist, and he, sorry, she is a playwright, she is an activist, and she was the first women playwright who wrote this play, A Raisin in the Sun. And also, she is the youngest American to win New York Critics Circle Award. So two great things we must know about Lorraine Hansberry is that she is the first woman black playwright and also she was the youngest woman playwright to win New York Critics Award, that is Circle Award. Okay, and then who was this Lorraine Hansberry? So here the Lorraine Hansberry wrote Raisin in the Sun, the, that play, this play is about a struggling black family and it portrayed how the family struggled amidst of white community, amidst of black community. And also, uh, so uh, let us know about Lorraine Hansberry now. And Hansberry was a uh, granddaughter of a enslaved person 
and uh, she was the third uh, third children of uh, four children their parents have she born on may 18 may, may 19th 1930 she was born on may 19th 1930 in chicago and hansberry's father was a successful real estate broker and her mother was a school teacher and they both so contributed a lot of amount for the upliftment of the afro-american uh, people who are living in uh, us through uh, naacp and the urban league and then uh, lorraine's family shifted to white neighborhood after some time and they were violently attacked by the white community and Lorraine's family they uh, they strongly refused to move from that place until they received a court order so that has become a um, kernel for this kernel for this uh, for this play a raisin in the sun so this action uh, has a great impact on Lorraine Sansbury to write this play raisin in the sun so we came to know that who is Lorraine Hansbury and what is the significance of the title and why did she write this play okay so uh, we have got uh, such an introduction let us move on to further uh, about uh, Lorraine Hansbury okay and she Hansbury uh, broke her family tradition of enrolling herself in the southern black colleges instead of attending the University of Wisconsin in medicine and while at her school she changed her major from painting to writing and then after two years she decided to drop out and then she moved on moved to new york city and then in new york she attended a new school for social research so she attended a new school for social research and then she worked for a black newspaper called freedom and she worked there as a writer and an associate editor for that newspaper called freedom and also she worked as a waitress and also a cashier or uh, in her free time she worked as a part-time worked uh, as a part-time waitress and a cashier in you know, some uh, another place and then she joined the daughters of abilities and she contributed letters to their magazine called the ladder which is about feminism okay feminism and homophobia and then uh, she committed herself uh, in the civil rights movement um, which was going on during uh, 1963 uh, and she met so many influential people like uh, harry belafonte Lena Hone and James Baldwin. Okay, and uh, she met Robert Nimirov. Hansberry met Robert Mary uh, Nimirov. Robert Nimirov, who is a Jewish songwriter, and, uh, and they too were married uh, in 1953. And later, uh, 10 years, they lived a life. And then after 10 years, in 1962, they got divorced. Uh, though they got divorced, they walked together. Uh, and then in 1964, uh, the sign in Sydney Brewstein's window opened and Hansbury was diagnosed with the pancreatic cancer. And she died on uh, January 12th, 1965. And after her death, Nimirov, uh, her former husband, adopted a collection of her writing and interviews and entitled 
to be young, gifted and black. Okay, so after her death, he collected all her writings and he compiled with the title called To Be Young, Gifted and Black, and which was enacted for uh, eight months in Broadway theater. And then uh, this play, A Raisin in the Sun, was considered one of the hallmarks of American stage and uh, it has continued to find audiences throughout the decades. Okay, and uh, shall we move on to uh, the, the play, A uh, Raisin in the Sun? Okay, so here in this slide, you could notice that uh, how, how, what uh, influenced her to write this play. I have given you the reasons. Okay, that is Hansberry's own childhood and her life in a racially segregated Chicago. So where her family moved in, in 1938. So she experiences various racial prejudices in that place among the white community. So one important event in this experience was uh, Hansberry's father, Carl, a migrant from Mississippi, who brought a case before the Supreme Court in 1940 to protest against the hostility shown by the white community towards this Afro-American that is Hansberry's father. Okay, that I already explained to you. And here, <clears throat> this play, which deals with the aspirations, hopes, and dreams, needs of Afro-American immigrants. The society, <clears throat> in which Lorraine Hansberry lives where the character has to struggle towards achieving their goals and they are struggling to search their identity, to be recognized, to be uh, respected in the society where they are living in. And the play uh, really touched most of the black community who are living in America with their, with, with their family members. And it insisted on the welfare of the family and the family system and the religious foundations they would like to have in their life. And also it uh, in emphasized that how they must shape uh, the uh, life of their, shape their life of their children. And they should encourage them to have a values despite the sufferings and the pathetic uh, distressed situations, they should have uh, uh, values in the young generations of African Americans. So here, we must, before we move into the play, we must uh, be familiar with the characters in this play. There are not uh, uh, numerous characters. It's only minimum characters, minimum characters. And uh, it's very easy to uh, uh, mem uh, keep in our mind. Okay, these characters are real life like characters and uh, uh, Please let us uh, introduce ourselves to these characters. So first one is Walter Lee Younger. Walter Lee Younger, he is a 35 year old chauffeur and who is a young son of Lena. Lena is the head of the family. Okay. And she is Mama, uh, her son is Walter Lee Younger. He was just 35 years old and he got married. 
His wife' name was Ruth, and both uh, Walter and Ruth have a son called Travis. He is just ten years old. Okay, so Walter, Ruth, and Travis, and Walter is Lena's son, and Lena is sixty years old when the play begins, and what happened to her was. she recently lost her husband walter senior and now the whole family is awaiting the uh, recipient of and she is the recipient of 10000 dollars as a life insurance check so now they wanted to escape from the uh, the ghettos of poverty so at that time they received a the news that the whole family is going to receive 10000 dollars as an insurance check so how it comes so it is the insurance amount for uh, the walter senior walter senior so uh, the family lost the head of the family recently so in such case so they are now they are they are uh, they are anticipating that when are they going to receive this amount and which will be the way and which will be the means to drive them away from all the suppression and depression and every one in the family believed that this amount the large huge amount is going to save each one of them from their sufferings and they also believed that they will accomplish their dream that is american dream okay and next character is benita yanga walter's 20 year old sister is benita she is a college student who invades the yanga household with her modern ideas she is known for her modern ideas and philosophies on race class and religion so she represented the modern american society while mama um represents a uh, old afro american community and she is a handsome intellectual and she has worked uh, hard to refine her speech why she does not want to identify herself with the afro american but she tried to identify herself with the white community american community so she has uh, she has taken a lot of effort to improve her speech just like the white community who amidst the uh, where they are living okay and then next character is ruth younger so who is she is walter's wife and travis mother and she is in her early 30s and she is exceptionally pretty and this character is uh, known for uh, known for its adaptability and tolerance and perseverance when you read the play you could understand that how she is adjusting with the whole situations without uh, muttering or murmuring or without finding fault with uh, her mother in law or her husband who is not able to earn much okay so she is a wonderful character portrayed by uh, lorraine hansberry in a raisin in the sun and travis younger is walter and ruth's 10 year old son as i told you earlier and joseph as a guy is a guy who is a nigerian guy and she he is a college student who is following benita okay who is following benita our next character is and asage represents the nigerian tradition and culture and he represented uh, 
the African tradition. Okay. And with, uh, he influenced lot, impressed lot, uh, Benita, okay, who is always fond of American culture. And she had a great impact through Joseph as a guy. And later, she likes to pursue her own tradition, that is African tradition. She fell in love with that, uh, uh, her own root once again, okay. That kind of a character is Joseph as a guy. And George Murchison, who is Benita's boyfriend and also fellow classmate. And he is uh, hailed from a very wealthy family to whom uh, Mama and uh, Ruth both wanted uh, Benita to, uh, to marry George Murchison, but Benita is not interested in George Murchison. So she said that um, instead of marrying, he could marry him only for the wealth. So not as a human being. So just like that she said, and uh, he is just a friend. Okay. And um, both Mama and Ruth wanted her to settle her life in a uh, wealthy community. So for that one, they suggested, but Benita uh, did, uh, did not have much interest in George Murchison, okay? And then Mrs. Johnson, youngest nosy, that is always interfering, okay? Nosy neighbor, and who points out the dangers of moving into Clebone Park where there are so many white people. So she used to inform them that you are moving from this community to somewhere there and for um, further improvement of the whole family uh, it is uh, she suggested that it is not good and you are going to face so many dangers from the white community okay so that kind of character is mrs johnson and then call Lin linda who is a white middle-aged representative from Clebone Park Improvement Society. So middle-aged representative from Clebone Park, where the uh, mama wanted to purchase home for uh, the whole family. So he is a representative and uh, to whom they uh, talked with him and talked with him and uh, they are they pay the amount and they are ready to move to that society though they are aware that they are going to face so many dangers from the white community okay so these are the characters and here let us move into the summary of the whole play and this play, Raisin in the Sun, tells us the story of younger family and they, each one in this family, each one determines to spend the insurance money left by the deceased Walter Senior. Okay, Walter Senior. And each one of the family members saw that insurance as a windfall is a way out of their existence in this black ghetto. And this scene creates a theme of the entire play. Okay. And then each one has different, different dreams and they wanted to pursue their dreams and to accomplish their dreams but it was very difficult for them okay the means to achieve their dream is very difficult so at the end how they are achieving and how they satisfy themselves how they felt that they are content with what they have got so they wanted to uh, uplift themselves to the level of a middle class family. That is their desire. Now they are living um, below the poverty line. line. So their dream is to uh, 
be a middle class uh, black family so that is their dream so for that how the uh, the poor family suffered a lot that is the story so the matriarch of the family lena chose to buy her family a house in a white neighborhood that was her dream because her husband that was her husband's dream that before death he wanted to buy a house for the whole family but he cannot achieve his dream so he uh, he he died that's why that burden fell on the shoulder of mama and she decided that buying the house in the neighborhood white neighborhood is her only aim to fulfill the dream of her husband who is no more now okay so that was her dream while her son walter he wanted to use the money to open a liquor store okay that was his dream so he wanted to open a liquor store mama wanted to use the money to buy a house in a white neighborhood walter lee wanted to make use of the money to open a liquor store in such a way he wanted to develop the family and he wanted to give his son a proper education what are the education he wanted to have not by not uh, forced to buy uh, uh, by their parents so he wanted his son to have the education what he wants to okay so that was his and also he wanted to improve the betterment of he wanted he wished to have the betterment of the whole family by opening that liquor shop that was walter's intention and then other members of the family also have different different opinions as well one wanted the money to finance her education okay that is benita so she wanted that money for her or uh, higher studies in college so she wanted to pursue medicine course but uh, they are running so out of money so he, uh, her brother uh, told her that it is uh, you need not study medicine course you study uh, the women course um, women subjects oriented course you study so the, in such a way it won't take uh, much amount from that 10 thousand dollars so this is how he, her brother uh, uh, asked benita that you better study as a uh, some other women's course you need not study medicine because it consumed it will consume lot of uh, amount from the insurance amount so he says uh, like that but benita wanted to study medicine okay and then uh, ruth wanted to use that amount for her abortion because when the play opens uh, uh, everyone uh, the readers and also the whole family of uh, of uh, lena came to know that she is pregnant okay so the uh, so the conflict in the play arose among several elements that have a stake in this dream in this dream okay values morals along with this dream they are uh, they have a conflict in the values morals age youth husband wife sister and brother so hansberry has crafted wonderfully these memorable characters who are strong willed that their interactions made the play very remarkable moving warm and how each character is empowering at the end of the play okay and it is considered as a version of american dream and here the youngers are poor african american family 
who are living in the south side of Chicago and there came an opportunity for them to escape from poverty in the form of uh, $10,000 life insurance. And who is the recipient? Lena is the recipient of that amount because just now she lost her husband. And Lena's children, Walter, Benita, they have a plans for that money. The oldest son, Walter, a man of 35 with his wife and a young son who wished to invest that amount in a liquor store. And his sister, Benita, is, who is a currently a college student and she wants to use the money for her medical school. And Lena has plans for the money. She wants to buy a house for the family and finance Benita's medical school. So the, the amount is 10,000. With that $10,000, with that amount, each one has to fulfill their own dream. In such situations, the environmental pressures are very high how it is. The five people are living in a tiny one-bedroom apartment. So small one-bedroom apartment where in that one-bedroom apartment, two families share one bathroom. Okay, And these pressures increase when Walter's wife, Ruth, finds out that she is pregnant for the second time. And she wanted to abort the child that the present situation does not permit her to bring up one more child in their family. At that time, the, the, the son of Walter asked for 50 cents. So when the play begins, the son asked for 50 cents from uh, from Ruth, for that Ruth refused, but uh, Walter ca cannot tolerate the sight that uh, his son is asking for uh, just 50 cents. And for that one, they are not, they are not in a position to uh, give that uh, 50 cents to his son. So later, uh, Walter sacrificed the amount he was given for the travel and for the lunch to his son. So in such a way, he is a very caring uh, parent for, uh, for his son. And Benita Yenger uh, is the source of many of the new ideas and philosophies. And uh, uh, she is constantly challenging uh, many ideas about her culture, race, gender, and religion. And, okay. And she, she, uh, there are two followers for her, as I told you. Um, uh, one is uh, George Murchison, another one is Joseph Asagai. Okay. And George Murchison is a wealthy Afro-American classmate of Benita's. Through his character, Hansbury is able to illustrate many of the class tensions exist within the black community, Afro-American culture. And as a guy is her second boyfriend, he is a college student who is from Nigeria. Through as a guy, uh, Lorraine Hansbury revealed us that Benita is able to learn more about her own root only from Asagai. So she learned about her African heritage through Asagai. So he gives her Nigerian dress, music, and encourages her uh, towards the African heritage. Okay. And uh, near at the end of the play, she inv he invites her to return to she uh, um, she um, as a guy invites her to return to Nigeria with him to practice medicine in their homeland. Okay, and 
Walter uh, also uh, encapsulates the American dream. He has a genuine entrepreneur uh, skill, okay, entrepreneur spirit and desire to progress and uh, he wishes to progress of the social leader into a middle class family. He is unsatisfied with his present job as a chauffeur and he wants a big house, a nice car, uh, pearls for his wife and an office job. In short, he desires to be, uh, to be a bourgeois sheik. Okay. And then Walter's uh, idealization of wealth and power uh, creates a deep hunger within him for a change. But only obstacle is the racism, which makes him stagnated, his hopes, his dreams. Okay. And Mama too realizes the significance of his plans. Though her idea is to buy a house, she understands the uh, understands and values his son's dreams and plans. Uh, she morally objects the idea of a liquor store. But uh, later, uh, when she understands that her son dream is very important. Um, uh, her son aspirations are, are important, um, then she is ready to help her son with a part of the insurance amount. Okay, and, and Lena gives her uh, son, uh, that is Walter, the whole responsibility over uh, the amount, the insurance amount, and she asked him to uh, put away some amount for the studies of uh, Benita's uh, medical school. To the contrary, what Walter decides, he decides to invest all the money in the liquor store business with uh, two of his friends who are very uh, doubtful character, known for their doubtful character. They are, uh, they are not a reliable person indeed. But the plans falls through. The Willy, one of the in investors, he ran away with all the money Walter gave. So what happens? The whole family entirely dependent on the money now they are already have a plan to move to the white neighborhood. Okay, already mama purchased part of the amount, the house with a lawn where their grandson could play freely. So that was the aspiration mama had. So already payment uh, was done for the house. The amount given to Walter did not, uh, he lost it. Uh, and Benita's studies also affected because he put that amount also for, uh, for the liquor store. So Willie ran away with all the amount and now uh, they have to move to the new place. But now, after all the payment, they are left out with nothing. And they are packing every items in their home. And devastated, Walter considers that taking an offer from Mr. Linder, what he said, he is a representative of that white community where they purchase that, uh, they purchase their home. So he offered that if you didn't come to this place, he will offer extra amount. So uh, that would pay youngers extra not to move into that white neighborhood. The option seems immoral and then it hurts the entire mentality of the black 
people that is the black family then lena's family and it is left to walter to decide whether to accept linda's offer or to move into the white neighborhood at last they they uh, he prioritizes money over human dignity so he prioritizes human dignity first and then money in such a way walter proved himself that he is a man okay though he lost his money he proved himself that he is a man he determined the that uh he determined to make uh determined to move into that white neighborhood and he is not ready to accept the offer of mr linda at last and he valued human dignity there okay and walter is unable to make the transaction under the innocent gaze of his son when he looked at uh, his son's uh, his son in uh, son he is not able to make the decision that uh, decision of dropping his idea of moving into that white neighborhood so he wanted to he wished wish to make his son enjoy uh, his enjoy his life okay so he is unable to make transaction under the innocent gaze of his son travis and the at the end the family the whole family decides to move they know that the road in front of them the road ahead of them will be very difficult but they are content and they are satisfied that they have made a honorable choice so they felt that they have self esteem okay so they have achieved their dream mama accomplished her dream dream of living as a family in that new neighborhood so everyone accepts in the in the uh, whole um, play that they have accomplished their dream so when mama's dreams fulfilled in this play it is we must believe that each one's dream the american dreams will be fulfilled soon or later she may benita may study medicine and uh, walter may start a new business and um, travis may go to a good school where he likes ruth also uh, could accomplish her dream that she could bring up her uh, the baby which is going to arrive soon into their family so in such a way loren hansberry uh, knitted the characters knitted the whole play as a beautiful uh, life afro american life in front of our uh, eyes to feel to cherish and to understand how the path the road are rough and tough but despite everything they are coming up in the life they empower in their life okay so they they give value to their uh, uh, way of life they consider the ethics morals and they they uphold the tradition and culture they are not ready to leave their culture and tradition so when at last benita uh, wanted to uh, go along with asagai to meet nigerian and to dedicate her service to uh, the nigerian people so in such a way she also started loving her own community okay and also uh here 
uh, there are so many themes in this play. First one is American dream. American dream means uh, the people, the each character in the play has different dreams. At last they have a hope that they will accomplish, they will attain the dreams or aspirations in their life. Okay, though it seems materialistic, okay, though it seems very materialistic, the American dreams are materialistic, but uh, they are that uh, they are ready to face lot of problems on their way, and at last they achieved. Okay, and. And next one is uh, identity, gender identity. In this play, there are three generations of women are represented. Mama is first generation, Ruth and Ruth is second generation, and Benita is third generation. Each one represents their own ideologies of of uh, blacks' life, how it is in danger. Okay, and. Um, and Lena moved to the north with the hopes of leading a better life. So the move up towards north was very significant that she had hopes of a better life for herself. So the move up north was significant. And Lena is a beautiful character. She thinks ahead of her times in some respects. And her dreams and aspirations are largely linked to her family's well-being rather than her own okay that we must understand and lena tolerates her husband's uh, husband's menacing and though she tolerates everything and she remains loyal to him even though they suffer under the same poverty line line okay and Walter's wife, Ruth, is in her early 30s and she is different from Lena and she vocalizes her frustrations only with her spouse, Walter. And she wanted to please him and always she is talking positively about the situations, about the business, okay? And she even encourages Benita not to antagonize her brother so much, okay? She's so supportive to, to her uh, husband and she is willing to work several jobs so that the family can afford to move into new house. Though she is a homemaker, she used to work in place uh, as a dishwasher or a cleaner just like that just to make the whole family move into a new house and benita who is a young feminist is the least tolerant of society's unequal treatment and the expectations of women okay and uh, she always challenges that walter's chauvinism and these three women hansbury skillfully illustrates how women's ideas about their identity and how it has changed over time okay and masculinity is uh, about uh, walter's character walter when walter gives travis a dollar when he asks for 50 cents at that time it uh, proves that uh, he has uh, uh, he has shown to his son that he is a man, he is a father. Though it is unaffordable, uh, affordable, he is ready to sacrifice the amount, the whole amount he has for the betterment of his son, Travis. And Walter chooses the liquor store investment not just to make more money for himself, but also to be, be, to be able to provide uh, better for his own family and uh, the whole family, not only for his own wife, for the whole family with his mama and, with, uh, and his sister. He wants to be 
be able to give Ruth pearls and also carry luck convertible. He wants to be able to send his son to the college of his choice. As a son, Walter wants to walk in his father's footsteps and provides for his mother in her old age. And he is framed by the example. So he sets an example of his father and a son. At first, Walter is willing to degrade himself in order to obtain these goals. But he faces a critical turning point when he encounters Mr. Linda's offer. And ultimately, he chose the honorable path so that he can stand before his son Travis with pride as a man, as a father. Okay, so that shows his masculinity. So Walter faces are those which relate to his identity as a man, whether it be in his role as a father or a husband or a son, he identifies himself as a perfect man. Okay, and he wanted to prove his son Travis that Walter values him the most. Okay, this is how uh, the masculinity of Walter is revealed. Uh, how a father should be, how a father and son should be. So he followed the footsteps of his own father, uh, Walter Sr. Okay, and then Afrocentricism. And how it is, okay, and here, Hansbury's Afrocentricism is expressed mainly through Benita's love for as a guy. He is a Nigerian native who is Benita seeks out during her search for identity and at last she finds her identity with that African. She is eager to learn more about Nigerian native and African culture African language, African music, and dress. So the playwright is well ahead of her times in her creation of all these characters. And he is, and the playwright Hasbury is able to dispel many of the myths about Africa. And she depicts the parallel struggles both Africans and African Americans must face through this play. And also class tension, tension has been portrayed within the black community through the character that is George Murchison, who is Benita's boyfriend. Okay, so George Murchison is Benita's well-to-do boyfriend. Though he is educated and wealthy, Benita trying, is trying to sort out her feelings about him. Her sister, uh, her sister-in-law, Ruth, does not understand what is Benita's ambivalence. He is good looking, he is smart, he is educated. Then why she didn't uh, uh, like to marry her, uh, marry George Murchison? That was a, a question of uh, Ruth. However, Benita is planning to be a doctor and she did not want to depend George Murchison fully on marrying well for her financial security. So she, as, um, uh, she stands for her own. She does not want to depend on George Murchison just to feel that she is financially secure. So in such a way, uh, Hansbury portrayed that the third generation Afro-American community and their ideologies that so they are not, uh, they are, uh, they wanted to stand on their own. They wanted to be independent. They wanted, uh, they did not like to depend on uh, men just for their financial security. So here Hansbury hints that marriage into Murchison family is not very probable. Okay. And, uh, and Benita also says that 
the merchants are harness to god real colored people the only people in the world who are more snobbish than rich white people or rich colored people so just like that she uttered so here despite their degree of wealth and education blacks in america were discriminated against that okay though they may be uh, well settled people black community is well settled and uh, they are wealthy people in spite of everything they are being neglected amidst the white community so that was shown through this play despite their degree of wealth and education blacks in america were discriminated against the wealthy afro americans had limitations in schools in housing in occupations so even they are wealthy their position is limited in schools in housing in occupation so in this play also we are uh, known to that how they are not allowed to buy a house in uh, in the white neighborhood so they have a uh, limitations on schools housing and occupation just like their poor counterparts and and now radical uh, so the these kinds of situations have been portrayed in the play a raisin in the sun so in through this ppt we have seen uh, what is the significance of the play a raisin in the sun okay and then uh, significance of the title and we are introduced to lorraine hansberry the playwright how she is the first uh, african women afro american women to write this play she is the first one okay in that way it is a uh, it uh, this play is the most important one and then we are introduced to all the characters of the play and then this uh, ppt this ppt has shown you the summary of the play and then at last uh, we have seen the themes in uh, raisin in the sun okay so with these uh, ideas and with these answers uh, let me conclude this uh, video okay thanks for watching this video uh, i hope that uh, you may have a good understanding of the play a raisin in the sun thank you for watching and uh, let us see each other in one more video lectures thank you so much children